Hey, what's up, everybody? Cornell Dana here coming at you with another live version of the podcast, Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast, with a kick ass episode for you with the one, the only Dave Savage, founder, CEO of Mortgage Coach. He is a absolute pioneer in this industry when it comes to helping mortgage professionals kick ass, take names, chew bubblegum, and crush it, both from a technology standpoint as well as innovation, strategy, tactics, mindset to help you elevate and really take your life, your business to the next level. That's why we are very much uh, comrades and kindred spirits in this business. He's been longer in this business than I am and uh, than I have. And uh, that's saying something. I've been 15 years. He's been even longer. So talk about Sucker for Punishment Club. And uh, <laughs> yeah, this, this guy's the real deal, man. He's been uh, in the game a long time. He's been crushing it a long time on the front lines of capitalism, continuing to grow his enterprise, continuing to add value to the industry, continuing to innovate, continuing to uh, crank out kick-ass content, drop knowledge bombs, get sharper, wiser, better with ever passing month and year. That's one of the things I really respect about Dave Savage is he's never content to just sit on his laurels. He's continually pressing for higher ground. He's leading by example. He's authentic. He's real. He is the real freaking deal, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, we're going to be talking about three habits, best practices of top performers in this business. What separates the top dogs from all the rest? That's what we're going to unpack today with the one, the only Dave Savage. Hey, thanks for hanging with us, brother. Uh Oh, I lost audio. What just happened? Your microphone was cool, and then it's not. It looks like maybe it's my output that's not working. Maybe you guys can hit us up live if you're watching this live and let us know if you can hear Dave, because right now I can't hear him, which is not altogether a good sign. Let's see if uh, it's my earpiece. It is not my earpiece. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you do your thing for a moment, Dave. Do a little intro. I'm going to bounce out and bounce back in. Let's see if that works. Okay, I'm going to let you just hold it down impromptu, dancing on your finger feet on your uh, toes for a moment, and I'll be right back. One second. Oh, now I'm here. Okay, well, it looks like Dave left. So here we are doing this live dance in the moment, and uh, Dave's going to see if he can sort out his technology. I don't know if it's me or you guys. Did you guys hear Dave or... Are you getting the same experience I did with no audio? Hit me up. Let me know if uh, indeed you had any issues with the audio there. Let me know if we can hear. Hey, everybody. I came. I, I logged in again, too. Are we there? There we go. Perfect. 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 Boom. All right, brother. Hey. So I Persistence love beats resistance. Yeah, we and we both jumped through that hoop pretty quick there. So thank you very much for that kind introduction, brother. Super honored. You do a great job of bringing leadership. And, and the way you bring leadership, the way you're using your Facebook group, the way you're using you know technology, whether it's mortgage reviews, whether it's Facebook, you crush it, brother. So super honored to be here. And I'm, I'm ready to just get interviewed by you. So I, I, know oh, the big, I know the big topic, and I'll let you just rift at me. Yeah, why don't we dive in and initiate people? There's going to be, I'm sure, people that have never – been graced with the awesomeness of Dave Savage before. So why don't we start off with a little bit about your story, your background, uh, what got you into the space, uh, coaching and leading and mentoring mortgage professionals, uh, as well as being in the technology space with Mortgage Coach, kick-ass technology, by the way, guys, for helping mortgage professionals stand out in the clutter amongst a ton of competition, especially now, and really lead the pack with phenomenal expertise, professionalism, uh, being able to not only differentiate yourself with realtors, but also with clients and become the only logical choice. Mortgagecoach.com, guys, check it out. Uh, this is a technology that will definitely separate you from your competition in a hurry. And so tell us about your journey. How did you get into doing Mortgage Coach? And uh, how did you get to where you are now, which is really a market leader? Tell us a bit about your story. Yeah, so I mean, I started as a loan officer. I mean, in my in my twenties in nineteen eighty seven, fall of nineteen eighty seven. I think rates we're going were, way back. Yeah, we're going way <laughs> back. You know, I got I got gray hair, and I think rates were at like eleven point two five. You know, I mean, so interest rates were higher. 
Amazing. Uh, we had just gone through a refi market and there were a lot of people that I, I was a broker. So I started with a mortgage broker. Mel Samick was my you know, entrepreneur, first mentor that brought me into the business. And just to like how naive I was, I uh, was working at Smart and Final as a cashier, going to college. And I, I knew I wanted to, I wanted to be a developer at that point. So I, I, I didn't come from a rich family. And Mel, I went with a, a best friend's girlfriend, was a processor of Mel, and went to a happy hour where Mel paid for drinks for everybody and drove her Mercedes. And I was like, dude, the guy loans people money. He's got a Mercedes, he's buying drinks. I want to know that dude. When, <laughs> I like this. I like this yeah, formula. Yeah, this is working so, for me. <laughs> and, so, and so I, I, I um, cold called him and like, you know, hey, Mel, Dave Savage met you yesterday. Don't know what you do, but I know, I, I think I've saved enough money that I can finish school. So I don't care how much you pay me. I want to work for you. I didn't even know. He's like, yeah, come meet me, kid. And, um, you know, so I started working for Mel. And my, my first gift was, he specialized in getting business from CPAs and financial planners. So he, he said, hey, here's what you do. He gave me the yellow pages. I'm dating myself again. He goes, just start calling down the list. And here's what I want you to say. Hey, I'm Dave Savage with Caliber Mortgage. We specialize in helping CPAs and financial planners with their financing needs. Do you ever have clients that ask you about real estate financing? Shut up. You know. And then I would, you know, I'd take it. So anyways, long story short, I started as a loan officer. Mel made a good hire. I killed it. I worked hard. I hustled. Um, I wasn't smart. I wasn't, I didn't have the kind of tactics. I didn't have mortgage coach, but I, I hustled and I figured it out. And then uh, I, I invented mortgage coach with my co-founder, Greg Wexler in 1997. And what inspired that? I'm curious. And what was the problem that you saw that Mortgage Coach really needed to be innovated in order to solve? So I wanted, I, I had figured out like at that time, the secret to success was just wowing people, like surpassing their expectations, you mm -hmm. know? And, and I had, I don't know where I read it or where I heard it, but, you know, way back when that people, when they're beating you, they're only judging you around two things. Do I trust this person? And could I respect this person or do I respect it's like trust and respect? Mm -hmm. And so, and so I wanted to like, whether it was, and, and I was young, I grew up in Huntington beach. I had spiked hair. I was like a punk rocker. <laughs> right. you know, I mean, I, I did not, <laughs> I did not, at least I didn't feel like I showed up as a person that people would like, I trust and respect this guy. I knew that people liked me, but I didn't know that they would trust and respect me as a mortgage professional. So I had to like, really like, okay, I got to get scientific on this stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and so I don't know, how, you know, just a, a series of experiments where, you know, what we call today the total cost analysis, where if I showed people more information than the average LO, like average LO shows a fee worksheet, I'd go, oh, I got to show them a little bit more. And it, the word transparency wasn't a word back in those days. But, you know, when right. I look back at what I did, I showed a next level of transparency. And... Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day, I had solved for this concept that I'm going to ask you some questions and then I'm going to provide you with this total cost analysis. It, it shows more information than most loan officers. And I didn't tell them that. I just showed them that. So, by the way, they trusted me because right. I'm giving them more than others. So it triggered trust. And, and, yeah. and it was next level information, which means I'm smart. I'm a badass. I know more than most right. loan officers. So, so at the end of the day, I had come up with this formula of the total cost analysis that triggered trust and credibility, respect, and mm -hmm. and and I wanted to scale it. So I wanted to automate it, you know, and and that led to the mortgage coach. So I was just solving for faster, more consistent trust and authority at the point of sale. So essentially, you. We're trying to solve this problem for yourself as an individual loan soldier LO to begin with. You notice that indoctrinating, educating, adding more value than anyone else with real meaningful information, advice, guidance was the secret sauce to getting that authority, getting that trusted uh, preeminent 
trusted advisor status, which obviously allowed you to get more clients, convert more clients, differentiate, differentiate yourself from the competition. And then you're like, how can I do this beyond just an Excel spreadsheet? How can I do this beyond just a PowerPoint? How can I do this beyond just, you know, the raw materials of average to make it truly exceptional? So here you are now, how many years later? Well, I mean, it's, there's been a couple of generations of mortgage coach. I mean, when I started mortgage coach, it wasn't like, oh, I want to be a thought leader. I want to be a SaaS technology guy. It started right. off with, I just wanted something to make my job easier. And then I was right. building my branch in my company. I mean, at one time I had a hundred loan officers and I wanted it to be easy and effective for them. So I could turn C players into B players, B players into A players. Mm -hmm. And I figured I could just upgrade everybody. So, sure. so I, I met my partner, Greg Wexler and you know, said, Hey, you know, you're, by the way, he's a nerd. So he is a technology guru. He created mortgage coach 1.0 and 2.0. Today we have a, a dev team and it's, you know, it's 5.0. Uh, when was that by the way? When did 1.0 get launched? Uh, it got launched from the stage of sales mastery in 1987. Wow. And so, and so here's the quick story. So, so he made version one as a bro, like, okay, Dave, I'll put something together for you. I'm like, okay, that's cool, but I need this. Well, that's going to be right. like 20 grand. And I'm like, you know, I made a lot of money. I'm like, all right, I can do that. You know, I got, you know, the 20 grand version. And I was like, eh, it needs to be this, 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 and this. He's like, well, that could be a hundred grand. Right. And, I'm like, and I'm like, I, bet, I better go close some more deals. <laughs> yeah. And then it kind of got to the point where like, okay, I could fund that, but you know, what's the ROI on that? And then, I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm going to be on stage at Sales Mastery. It was like six months from now. And I know other loan officers will want this. How about this, Greg? I promise you I'll sell 100. I'll either sell 100 grand of this or I'll pay you that 100 grand sometime, you know, whatever. And we shook, did a handshake deal. Uh, by the way, the name of Mortgage Coach is a, Mortgage Coach is a DBA for WOW Tools. So we, we shook hands on this WOW tool because that's what I remember my epiphany as a salesperson was right. wow if I could just wow people, I'd crush it. And so gen one of mortgage coach was wow tool. And then when we decided to sell it, we're like, yeah, let's call it mortgage coach. Longer story on that. So anyways, netting it out, I told my story on the stage of sales mastery in whatever, August of 1997. And about 118 people followed me to the back of the room and paid us $990 a pop. And we started Mortgage Coach with, you know, Craig got that $100,000, you know, boom, and I was in business. And the rest is history. Amazing. Yeah. And obviously the reason why you've been so successful is not just because it works, but because you continue to innovate, you continue to roll out new iterations, you continue to add more bells and whistles without uh, undermining the user friendliness and the accessibility and the effectiveness for the user. So that's a huge piece is you actually started instead of being on the outside, looking in, trying to figure out, uh, you know, what would mortgage professionals want? You were one, you were living it and breathing it on the front lines of capitalism every day. So it was really born by a mortgage professional for mortgage professionals, but initially it was just for you, which is one of the brilliant things about your origin story is it was authentically authentically created for someone just like everyone else listening and watching on the front lines trying to figure out how to make this thing freaking work and then here you are decades later still cranking it still crushing it and still helping not just mortgage professionals create breakthroughs but helping them do it better easier than ever before so i'm super stoked to dive into our content today which is three habits three best practices of top performing mortgage professionals. You've been in this game a long time. You've seen the ups, you've seen the downs, you've seen the good, bad, and the ugly. You've seen more terrain in this business than perhaps anyone else I know in the space. So if there's one person that I think is uh, the absolutely best equipped, uh, most uh, deeply experienced at being able to handpick exactly what those three traits are and to articulate it to our audience today, it would be you. So hit us up, brother. What are the top three that really separate the best from all the rest? Cool. So we may share more than three, but we'll definitely, I'm prepared to net out three 
uh, at the beginning of the year, I wrote a LinkedIn article and it was cause it was called 2018's most common practices and habits of top producers. And as, as many of you know, if you're watching this, I interview top producers every single week, like multiple top producers. So there's not a there's not a week goes by that I don't do at least two, if not three interviews, and they're published in our YouTube channel. So I interview a lot of top pros. Now in this LinkedIn article, I highlighted eight, you know, what I call practices and habits of top producers. And I'm gonna I'm gonna pick three where I just like if if you you know all eight are critical, and there's probably 20, but if there were three, just three, what would those three be? And, mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm not necessarily going to do them in an order of priority, although I think everybody watching this, there's probably an order of priority in which you should focus on it. Um, but the, I mean, the first one is, is just this thing that I've noticed that I've, I've never met a top producer that, and, and when, by the way, define top producer, someone closing over 100 loans a year. Obviously, sure. if you're closing over 200, you know, you're like franchise player. You know, if you're closing over 100. You are a top producer. And by the way, if you're closing 60 or more, I mean, you're, that's a good, sustainable career in this mortgage business. But if you're closing less than that, there's, just, there's always another level. So, so first and foremost, the best of the best, it's, it's consistency. It's, it's that they, they've got their own perfect loan process. They've got ways in which they show up for partners. They've got ways in which they use Facebook or whatever social channels they use and, and they're consistent, you know, mm -hmm. and they, and they don't give up, you know, they've got good practices, you know, they show up with the same family asking, I mean, again, you're tailoring it. So based mm -hmm. off of, is this family Uber financially sophisticated? Do they barely qualify? Do they use tech? I mean, you're tailoring your experience but you're delivering the same great experience to every family. So consistency is, is like number one. You know, if you want to be in the, mm -hmm. the hundred plus loan club, you need to have consistent lead gen marketing strategies that you implement for years. Mm -hmm. And, and you need to have great conversion practices that you deliver for every single lead, every single family you have. And, uh, you know, like I, I just did a mastermind before this call and someone was saying, hey, I, I did it all right and killed it. And they still went with Big Bank, you know, and we also have a lead conversion playbook. So I don't know if you want to put a link to it uh, that has all the practices. But yeah, I, 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 I usually definitely include that, you know, when I talk to a loan officer, you know, there are times where it's like you go through whatever their lead conversion checklist is that they did it all right. And then I'm just saying, hey, that's the 20% that you're never going to win, period. Right. Like we, can't, we can't win them all. Sure. Um, but most of the time, there's something in that perfect experience that you're like, oh, I didn't do this. And I did this, but I was kind of sucky at it. You know, I mean, so consistency, is number one. Yes. Any comments on that? Yeah, no, I wholeheartedly agree. And I think what you're really speaking to, Dave, is not just consistency in a mediocre strategy or a mediocre system or lack thereof, but consistency in the vital few that really push the needle on profit and performance, consistency in the things that actually work. So obviously it doesn't help to have consistency in heading east when you're looking for the sunset. That ain't gonna help, right? It's intelligent, strategic consistency where you find out what works, you build a system around it, and then you're consistently persistent in executing that formula day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out. I mean, let's be real. That's why we're still in the game, kicking ass and taking names after all these years. It's because we locked in into a formula and we don't quit. We got too much grit to quit or we're just suckers for punishment or maybe a combination of both, but we're consistent. Like you, you're interviewing two top producers a week consistently. That's one of the reasons why the top years, dog in the space for, for 10 years, you know, like for like, 10 years. Yeah. Like you know. talk about content creation avalanche, right? It didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen in a day. It's happening daily. So the, I think the big thing I would pull out of what you just said that I want to highlight is it's not enough to just be consistent in your inconsistency or your consistency in lackluster mediocrity. 
It's about being consistent with what works, being consistent with excellence, being consistent with a high quality champion level routine will get you champion level results. Is that the idea? I, I love that. And I'm going to share three strategies and I want everybody to like, almost like think of these as circles, three strategies, draw a circle around them and call it level of excellence. You know, right. where it's like, you know, and that is a difference. Like when you interview struggling professionals versus thriving, there are practices that they do consistently. And then there are levels of excellence in which they do it. So, so, so number two and jump in any time is, is just consistent prospecting daily. I, um, so when you say prospecting, do you mean like um, I'm gonna I'm gonna cover it. I'm gonna okay, cover it. I'm gonna cover it. So so and and it, well, I'll I'll cover it quickly because I have seen a lot of ways of being successful. You know, there's like two hours of prospecting daily, and if you're new to the business, four. And I have seen people who cold call be successful. I have seen people that don't use the phone and they're using social media and they're using text and email be successful. So I'm going to cover a few thoughts I have that are, you know, my principles of prospecting, but I don't, I'm not really into the how I'm into this, the, like you're doing it daily. You're right. like, you know, like an interview I did with Josh metal, who is one of the greatest branch managers of all time. I mean, his, his branch does over a thousand loans a year. Uh, if you want to put a link down below, it's called, um, What's it called? Um, prospecting mastery, gratitude for, or wait, grateful for, grateful for greatness. And one of the reasons I love it so much is he talks about his practices of how he and his team get in this purposeful, grateful attitude before they do their hours of prospecting, mm -hmm. and they and they they time block this prospecting. Remember, they do it for two hours. I think it's nine to 11. Uh, but here's, here's the deal. It's, I care about the consistency five days a week. And I do think time blocking it makes it more likely that you'll do it. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of tactics, you know, I, I have interviewed top producers that are like, call it the digital mortgage pro, you know, that, that like barely talk to people. But, you know, Facebook, digital, Kill it. I mean, I talk to successful people that are digital mortgage pros. Um, mm -hmm. I do talk to more people that are hybrid, you know, where where they're, you know, the, the high touch, high um, tech experience. So mm -hmm. most of my community and most of the loan officers I talk to, I think they they have this this high touch, high tech approach. Um, my big takeaway for or my big message to everybody is that you do need to be both. And then when it comes to, you know, converting a family, converting a realtor, it's the multi-channel approach. And it's like, you know, understand their channels, like stock them. Like, are they using Facebook? How are they using it? Are they using LinkedIn? How are they using it? Um, I text everybody. Like, I don't feel like I have a relationship until I have a text relationship with someone. So, you know, email is probably, in my opinion, while it's super powerful, we use it, maybe every customer we have an email relationship with. I don't consider like I've got a great relationship with the highest probability of conversion until I have a multi-channel relationship. And, and the channels I use are, are text and Facebook. And I use Facebook Messenger. You and I do a lot right? on Facebook Messenger. You I know, thought so, we were tight, brother. I thought we were tight, but I haven't got a text from you from a while, man. So I well, don't know. Cause, I don't... Well, that's because you and I, <laughs> we, we, we do it all on Facebook Messenger. You know, you, I, thought it was the, I thought it was in the inner circle until we did this interview. Apparently, I got the next level to achieve. Text messaging, baby. Text messaging. <laughs> well, no, no. Here's, here's, I, know you, I, know you, I know you're joking, but here's the point. Everybody has their, you know, like, where do they connect with their friends and family? And, and and sometimes it's Facebook Messenger, sometimes it's tech. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not usually email. Like I don't no, think most no. families now, like that's how we're communicating with friends and family. Yeah. You know, so I don't know, I'll let you, I'll pass it back to you. because no, I agree. 
This is a and when you first said game. prospecting, I was like, man, okay, is this like going to be old school cold calling? And then you unpacked it and I was chomping at the bit and kind of uh, jumped the gun there. So thank you for unpacking that. Some people do the digital pathway where they're bringing leads in and then just converting those leads through text message, voicemail, email, automation, and then eventually picking up the phone and, you know, taking the application. Some people are doing a lot more, you know, heavy lifting, cold calling real estate agents, booking appointments, or, you know, how, heaven forbid, cold calling prospective clients. That's definitely Cro-Magnon marketing. But uh, all of those encompass the big idea of lead generation, or some people like to call it prospecting. Other people like to call it opportunity creation. It's all the idea of getting fresh blood, getting fresh new prospects, getting new chances at bat, getting new leads, apps, in the pipe that convert into pre-approvals and closings. I mean, it's all about getting that fresh blood because if you don't get that, you're dead in the water. Every smart mortgage professional knows if you don't have a lead generation system, as you say, that's consistent and effective and effective and consistent, you're dead in the water. I mean, if you're waiting for the, home, for the, for the phone to ring, you're gonna be the first and most affected when market downshifts happen as opposed to lease and last. And chances are you're in stagnation or regression. It's just a fact. We cannot wait for the phone to ring. we got to be proactive, not reactive. So I wholeheartedly agree that that is definitely a trait of a top producer, prospecting. Yeah. So what's the third one, brother? Well, and and I would just leave it like if what you're doing is working, you keep doing it. If what you're doing is not working, you got to add to the channels, you know. And, And I do think just I've heard you. I do think I push still phone calls more maybe than you do. Yeah. But I, I think phone calls are brilliant. I well, love phone calls. Well, I just well, like well, to have well, them pre-sold well, me before yeah, no, I, I talk to yeah. them. No, I don't like cold calls. Like I had a right. question in this recent interview where it's like, how do I get the whale realtor on the phone? And and first of all, there's there's no one single way, but it's it's stalking them, it's communicating them in the channels they want. And then it's trying to get try to get introduced to them. Like there is a chance that you know someone that knows them that can help make an introduction. And, and I think too many loan officers, they either get stuck and they're not using enough multi-channel approaches and referral concepts. And then by the way, if you can't, like if you've got nobody that connects and you've got no referral, you've got no multi-channel approach, there's more whales in the ocean. You know, right. who, are the, who are the whales that you can get an introduction to? Who are the whales that you can stock on social and connect with them in a multi-channel way? Go get those whales. So, all right, yeah. so, so number three. Um, and number three, I'm gonna really, you know, kind of put a hyphen in it. It's gonna be education slash presentation, you know? Mm. And, and I don't think I've talked to too many top producers, closing 100 loans, closing 200 loans, where they do not deliver an educational experience where their advice matters. And it's a presentation, like, it's like, they're just smooth, you know, like, you know, like when I invented mortgage coach, you know, I had a educational presentation that while it was different, like how I delivered that experience to an FHA buyer that barely qualifies was different than how I would deliver that experience to someone that's on their third property and they're buying their dream home. Right. It's a different conversation, but it, it always had this educational presentation that was awesome, that was was incredible. And mm-hmm. and I was polished and I consistently delivered it. Uh, you know, the, the mortgage coach total cost analysis is a component of it. You know, 34% of the top 1% in America use mortgage coach as part of their educational experience. So so we're like a spoke on the wheel. But there are other spokes on the wheel, you know, and so I would just, you know, leave my thoughts with this, you know, a great educational experience. You ask great questions because no matter how good your educational experience is, if you didn't ask the question so that it's on point for the family. Right. It's no good. Uh, A question that I'd give everybody on this call that most loan officers don't ask that I think creates a unique gap of opportunity is ask people, how old do you want to be when your home's paid off and you're debt-free? Mm-hmm. And then right. and then go, and, and based off this loan or the loan that you're getting, how old are you going to be? What you'll find is that people are typically five to 10 years off where they want to be. 
So, so again, there's a lot of questions, you know, how long do you plan to live in the home? You know, what do you want to have your payment? But every loan officer is asking those questions. And yes, they help you tailor that educational presentation, but ask the debt free question because it, uh, it's unique, it's different. And then when you give your unique presentation, um, trust me, you can create more gap and separation. Uh, you know, the, the other component to a great presenta educational presentation is, is teaching. If, if, if you're not telling them things they don't already know, like if you didn't get them to go, wow, I never thought of that before, that's, that's the goal. The goal is for them to go, oh, you know, I spent an hour on Google and I couldn't find that myself, or I've talked to three other loan officers and I've never heard that before. You know, so, so you're teaching them something they didn't already know. So tailor, teach as part of the presentation, mm -hmm. you know, and then, and then you, you really got to lead. That's the other thing is I think mm -hmm. leadership is important. You know, I just did an interview with a loan officer on how do they get families to use their digital mortgage experience, you know, and you got to lead, you know, and then, and then I also look at that as part of the follow-up. You've got to, you've got to, you know, ask great questions. You got to teach them something they didn't know. And then you need to you need to control and manage and lead that process. So so those are the three, brother. Any any questions, comments? Man, there is so much nectar in there. We could we could camp out for another hour or two just on what you just said said right there. And uh, we're just scratching the surface of the surface. But a few things that I want to highlight for people. Number one, if you're you know shit nuggets right now with the Amazons of the world and the Zillows of the world and the Quickens of the world. Uh, coming into the space and you're freaking out because you're thinking, man, I'm not going to have a job pretty soon if these guys come in. You don't understand the power of education. You don't understand the power of what Dave Savage just talked about in positioning yourself, not just as a mortgage jukebox where they press the button and out comes a rate, which is basically what the Amazons of the world are going to be all online, but instead positioning yourself as a trusted preeminent advisor where you're asking their questions, you're finding out what their goals are, what their hot buttons are, what their fears are, what their desired outcomes are. And then you're tailoring, just like Dave talked about, tailor it to their needs, tailor it to what they're looking for. And you're educating. I can tell you right now, I've had more my mortgage broker for over 15 years and he lives eight hour drive away. I never meet him in person. Everything's over the phone, done multiple transactions. The reason why I work with him is not just because he's one of the top dogs in the entire nation in terms of volume. That's not the reason. Although certainly the reason I work for him or work with him rather is because he's so exceptional at what he does. And here's what makes him so exceptional. It ties in perfectly with what Dave's talking about. He gives me information I wouldn't have got anywhere else. The guy guides me, leads me, Direct, he gives me information strategically to get to my outcome better, faster, easier. He's saved me a ton of money. He's helped me buy real estate. There's no way I ever would have bought as efficiently, as effectively had I not had his advice. That's what you guys want to do. There's no way the Quickens of the world, the Zillows of the world, the Amazons of the world are going to allow you uh, to get that outcome just through the rate jukebox model. You will not achieve that. You'll get a low rate, but it's not... You know, it's a cookie cutter approach. People want value. They just don't want the lowest price. If people just wanted the lowest price, they'd buy a Firefly, not a Ferrari. Let's be right. real. What do you guys really want? You want to be rolling in a Firefly or do you want to be rolling in a Ferrari? Do you want to be selling Ferraris or do you want to be selling Fireflies? I don't know about you, but I'm all about Ferrari positioning, Ferrari income, Ferrari contribution, Ferrari impact, Ferrari lifestyle, not Firefly. And that's precisely what Dave's talking about. So love it, Dave. I wish we had more time, brother. We're just scratching the surface of the surface. It's so yeah. good. So, and uh, there's so much more. So let's do this. In the last couple of minutes, I want everybody to write down an acronym. Uh, not that we need more acronyms, but, you know, I want you to write down um, um, W-A-C-D. W-A-C-D. And let me tell you, if you were in the retail space, this is something that you have been thinking about and talking about for 10 years, you know, and WACD stands for what Amazon can't do, what Amazon can't do. Now here's the deal. 
I don't want you to just worry about Amazon mortgage. When you when you think of that A, think of big bank that you compete with in your local market. Think of it with that credit union that's the low price leader in your market. Think of it as online tech company that does mortgages. You know what they can't do, and 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 that is that is the bullseye for everybody on this call, or at least the leadership I'm bringing. I'm thinking of you as a, you know advice-based local mortgage professional. While you might do lead gen on a bigger scale in different markets, you know, your core, you know, your core value prop is I'm a local provider. So one more word I want you to write down is, is personally branded advice experience. Like I want you to think of everything that you do, it's it's got to be personalized. It's got to you've got to deliver this advice experience. And, and so I want, you to, I want you to audit what you're doing and how you're doing it. Do you think if you ask your clients, you know, what, you know, what's my brand? What do I stand for? It's okay if you know, like people, if I ask people that they're, they're like, Dave always wears a black shirt. So part of my brand is, you know, when I'm on stage, I wear a black shirt a lot. That's cool. Um, you know, once you so, go black, you ain't never going back. That's what yeah, they right, say. Right, right. <laughs> but, but if you're a mortgage pro and you don't think your clients would look at you as like his advice matters, some version of that, trust me, you are not WACD. You know, you are not a commodity is what you, you are. You are absolutely. So, you know, hopefully you guys will check out mortgage coach. Cause that's, you know, we provided technology. Again, a spoke on the wheel. We're not a magic pill. We're not a silver bullet. We are an incredible platform to deliver part of the advice experience. But I, I would just urge everybody, you know, um, tune in to this channel. I'm a big fan of you, brother. You, I love your attitude. Every time I, I get funny quotes that you say, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 like, it makes sense. And I, no, my, and I, and it, and my buddies call it Dornisms. They're Dorn, like, yeah, dude, you gotta Dorn write a book of Dornisms. I'm like, I would write it, but the only people who are gonna buy it are my mom and my wife. So I don't know if no, I'm down bro, you, well, don't, 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 don't sell it, man. You should write that and just do a little white paper or LinkedIn article. Right. Or, just give it away. Or, yeah, just give it, give it to the crew to build your community, man. But I get I get Dornisms that I, I always I always have fun, man. So I, I have fun hanging with you. Like if there was if there was a if 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 there was a brand for you, it's it's you're a go getter and and you have fun and you make things fun. So appreciate being here, brother. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for leading from the front. Thank you for being the kind of guy who doesn't just talk the talk but walks the walk. And uh, man, you're the kind of guy that uh, people can hitch their you know their wagon to, and they know they're going straight to the top. And so those of you who are watching, listening. If you have not checked out mortgagecoach.com, you need to check it out right here, right now. If you even have two ounces of ambition, two brain cells to rub together, and a desire to kick ass in this business, do yourself a favor. Go to mortgagecoach.com. It's the most badass software for helping you differentiate yourself with real estate agents, with clients, in a way that positions you as being sophisticated, yet elegant, yet highly educational, so you no longer have to worry about the being a replaceable cog in the wheel do yourself a favor check it out guys it's badass with a capital b trust me and all my clients who use it and use it religiously swear by it so there's your uh uh your plug dave that's the unsolicited plug you no, can send I, a check in the mail now i i i, <laughs> I, I appreciate it so by the way guys request a demo at mortgagecoach.com or you can private message me in whatever social channel and if you do email me um, my email is Dave at Mortgage Coach. And if you watch this interview and you sign up within the next week, I'll I'll make sure my sales team, you know, gives you a free month. I don't want to get into a Ginsu knife commercial on what it costs. But <laughs> if you want a free month, email me Dave at MortgageCoach.com and we'll hook you up. Yeah, just say you watched the interview with uh, Dave Sage on the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast and Dave will take good care of you. He'll hook you up. Thank you, Dave. All right, brother. Hey, appreciate All you, right, man. guys. Have a good one. Hey, I appreciate everybody. you. Like, give us a like if you got some value from it, man. Take it easy, Absolutely. everybody. Thanks for hanging with us, guys. This is another interview with the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. We've been with the one and only Dave Savage from MortgageCoach.com. Be sure to check that out. Thanks for tuning in. And again, 
go forward, take massive action, bring massive positive energy to that action. Chances are you'll get massive results, y'all. Make it a great day. Peace.